Hey guys, John here, Unity 3D Coder. Today's video, we're going to be covering interfaces. So what's an interface? An interface can be thought of like a contract. And basically what that contract is, is whatever is inside that contract must be implemented. Okay, so with an interface, we use interfaces almost to be more modular and for code reusability. Basically, interfaces allow us this thing called plug and play, which is basically having a bunch of different components that you can just add into each of your scripts. But the idea behind it is that an interface is like a contract and whatever is in that contract must be implemented. So for example, say you had a damage contract and inside that damage contract was a, was a damage function. All right? Every script that inherits from that damage contract, which is an interface, it must implement the damage function or the clause in the contract. So why or when to use an interface? What's a really good example? An excellent example is for a damage, um, a damage function. Say you had a damage function for your player and enemy, and for whatever reason you want your player to be damaged differently than the enemy. It doesn't make sense for the enemy and player to share a damage function then, because they're doing two completely different things. It also might not make sense if the damage function is hosted on a game manager, and then both of those guys are connected to the game manager to grab that function. Instead, we can use an interface, and both of them can inherit from that interface, and they can, all, they can both have unique damage functions. So let's look at how we declare an interface. All right, an interface is just like any other C Sharp script. Go ahead and create a C Sharp script, and you can name this whatever you want. Try to avoid Unity and C Sharp specific names. I'm going to go ahead and name this interfaces, plural. Okay, and this script is going to hold all the interfaces. You can have more than one in, in a script, so you should typically have all of them implemented here. These are your interfaces. Now, with an interface, you don't need anything with this class. You can delete the class. You can also delete these namespaces if you want. I'm going to go ahead and keep them uh, just because it's you know it's the standard code layout uh, but you do not need the interface or I'm sorry you don't need the namespaces so I'm gonna go ahead here and we're gonna declare an interface the way you do that is you say public interface and you'll see here on the summary what's it say it says an interface defines a contract a class or struct that implements an interface must adhere to its contract so interfaces work with classes and structs so interface, and then let's give it a name. What is this first interface going to be? We're going to create a damage interface, a damage contract. The standard for creating an interface is using a capital I for interface, and then you call it whatever it is. What's this contract? It's a damage contract, and then typically you would name it with a bull at the end, meaning I damage a bull. So you would have like an I damageable interface, you would have an I fixable interface, an I walkable interface, or I immovable interface. It doesn't have to be named this way, it's just typically the standard. So here we're going to create a public interface I damageable contract, and then it's just like a class. So here we go. So this is one contract, and then you would fill in the contract details. And then here, if I want to, I can create another one. I could say public interface. Let's go and create, we have an I damageable. Let's go and hit say public interface um, I hewable. Let's create a hewable contract. So here's an I hewable. And we fill in the contract terms here. All right, so here's how you create the interfaces. Now, what can we put inside this interface? It's important to know what you can't put in it. And the only thing you really can't put in the interface are variables. So I can't say public int um, my int. I cannot put a variable here. Watch what happens if I go ahead and go back to Unity. We're going to have an error because interfaces cannot contain fields or constants, no variables. However, what they can contain is a property. So check this out. If you want a property, you can go ahead and say public int and then my int my int, and then create an auto property, get set. There you go. There's our auto property. All right. And now if we go back to Unity, that fixes the error. So you can use, pro if you need a variable to check something, you must use uh, a property. And this also brings up another thing. 
interfaces don't have public modifiers. Okay, you see that? It says the modifier public is not valid. Everything is just private, all right? Or it's just standard int my int. And if you were to create a function uh, in here, you would say void my int, you wouldn't say public void. So that fixes the error. Now, if we wanted to have a function in here, right? So say for the I damageable, we don't really need a property, but I'm just doing that for example cases. If I wanted a function in here for damage, I would say here void damage. And then you can just do that. You have to just close it off. No, no, uh, no declaration of what goes in it. You just have your void damage. And there you go. So this is how you create the contract. And if you go to Unity, no errors. All right. So let's actually go ahead and create uh, this contract properly. So in this I damageable, the only thing I'm going to have here is a damage function for now. Maybe something later. And what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to go ahead and say here void damage. Now. When this function is called from another script, I want to be able to pass out, I want to be able to pass into this function how much I want to damage, right? So maybe I want to take in an int parameter. So I'm going to say int and then damage amount. So anyone that inherits this contract must have a damage function that allows you to pass through an integer value for damage amount. So let's go ahead and look at how we can actually use this. Let's go ahead and create a player class. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new c -sharp script, name it player, but I already actually have one from an existing one, so I'm just going to name this uh, Jonathan. Assume it's a player class, okay? And here's how you implement an interface. It's the exact same thing as what's implemented here. This says Jonathan inherits modern behavior. Well, interfaces aren't inherited, they're implemented. So we use the same thing. It says Jonathan inherits and then the interface, the name of the interface, it's automatically going to find it. So I damageable, and you'll see here, public interface I damageable. And there you go. Now, what if I want to keep mono behavior? Well, I can add it back. I can say inherits from mono behavior, comma, and then space implements I damageable. So that's how you can add um, interfaces. If I had another interface, which I do, I have the I healable, I say comma, I healable. And now I'm implementing that interface. So you can implement multiple interfaces by a comma, okay, by separating them with a comma. So watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and remove the iHealable for now. Watch what happens here if I just go ahead and run this. If I go ahead and save this script now, I'm inheriting from mono behavior and implementing the iDamageable contract. If I go to Unity, we're going to have an error. The reason being is because Jonathan does not implement interface member iDamageable. I'm using the contract, but I'm not filling the terms. The terms say... I need a damage function that passes through an int. So I have to, and it must be public. Um, so check this out. And actually, if you look at the error, guys, it will say right here, Jonathan does not implement interface member I damageable dot damage with an int. So I need a function that is exactly that. So here, and it must be public. We need to say here, public void damage, and then int damage amount. And then it's like a normal function. So if we go back here, now we satisfy all the conditions in the contract, no errors. So that's how we can do that. Now, this here is our player. Now, say we had another script for our enemy that is also going to uh, inter implement that interface. So we're going to create a new c -sharp script here. We're going to say enemy devil. All right. And he's going to also inherit from mono behavior, but he's going to also implement um, the I damageable contract. And just like with the player, he also needs a public void, and then damage, int, and then damage amount. And this variable here, damage amount, this could be whatever. The important part is damage and int, okay? That's what's required in the contract. All right. So now they both have their own damage functions, and we can make them unique to each other however we want to do that. Now here's an issue with this. What if I want the player's damage to be affected by a float? So here the player gets damage, you can pass through a float value, but for the enemy I want it to be an int value. What happens if we go ahead and save this? We're going to get an error now, because Jonathan does not implement the interface I damageable of type int. We're breaking the contract. The contract ex explicitly says right here our damage function takes an int, but I want to use a float for my player and I want to use an int for my enemy. So how can we do this? We can do this through the interface iDamageable, and we can use the T brackets to specify a type. 
And the way we do that is we use the T keyword. This can actually be anything you want. I can make this K, I can make this T, I can make this Y, A, it doesn't really matter. Um, the common standard is to use T for type. And what that says here is I damageable type. And what type are we going to use here? All right, and whatever that T is, is going to match here. See? So T. So void damage type damage amount. So what I can do now is I can go over to my interfaces and I can say I damageable and then I pass through the type. I want to use for Jonathan, I want to use float. Okay, and then for enemy devil, watch what happens if I don't add that to anything. We're going to have an error because we're not uh, we're not fulfilling the contract. It said the I damageable cannot be found. The reason it can't be found is because it's not complete. It's missing a type. So we're going to go ahead and say here, uh, we want int for um, damage, right? So the type that we use here is the type that's going to match our contract uh, inputs. So let's go ahead and test that out. And sorry, ignore that Twitter thing. I am apparently trending. <laughs> all right, so now all the errors are gone. So now if we check it out here, check this out. Our Jonathan uh, is implementing the I damageable contract using float. So he can, he can get damage with float values, and the enemy can get damage with int values. This is how useful uh, interfaces are. They allow you to do this thing called plug and play. And it also just reassures you that the I damage or contract is going to force you whenever you use it you have to have this damage function and then you can create it and customize it however uniquely you want to this class so they're really useful they're really cool um, here's an example of doing it with variables say I use the I healable and the only thing the I healable requires is a property for your health so we say public int um, health and we say get set so we have an auto property for health and then if I save this and go into Jonathan, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to comma, and we're going to say I healable. If I don't, if I just save this now, we're going to have an error because we're not fulfilling the contract. It says the modifier public is not valid. All right, that's because we're using public. Remember, it's just int. And then now I'm going to get another error because I'm still not fulfilling the contract. It says Jonathan does not implement the member um, health dot get and dot set. So in my health class, I need a property. I need to say public int health, and then get, oops, get set. So now I'm fulfilling the contract. I have a property for health, and check it out. And there you go. So now I have a health system involved with all my iHealables. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys can do some really cool stuff with interfaces. They're really neat to use once you get a grasp on them. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, they allow you to just basically re its code reusability in a modular way known as plug and play. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribing. All the links are in the description. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot.